Hi there, welcome back to Wisdom Nuggets, Lessons from the Book of Proverbs. So I embarked on a journey to study the book of Proverbs throughout this month of August 2023. I started, of course, on the 1st of August and today is the 18th of August. Now, reality check, I am not on the 18th chapter because i missed some days yes i missed some days but the good news is i am still on track the holy spirit is helping me i have been consistent with the exception of those few days that i missed right i have learned something however i had scheduled that i'll be doing my study for the book of proverbs at night and i have discovered that nighttime does not work for me when it comes to studying because the moment i am ready to study usually i have scheduled that i would do the study last thing before i go to bed so like while i'm doing my night prayers i'll do the study and then pray and then go to bed i noticed it wasn't working those were the days i missed why i have walked all through the day stress tiredness, everything weighs down on me and most of the time I am dozing off. And so on several occasions, few days, I had to close my journal, just say my prayers and I went to bed. So I missed some days and now I am few days behind. However, the good news is the Holy Spirit is helping me. I am on course, I am studying and the Lord is giving me so many, teaching me so many things teaching me so many things and today i'm going to be sharing with you seven things seven things that i have learned from the book of proverbs from chapter one to chapter seven of course i've gone past chapter seven as at the time i'm doing this video i am uh, i've done chapter 14 right and god have taught me so many things so what i want to share the first lessons that i've learned from the first seven chapters trust me there are many. I cannot share all of them in one video. So I have chosen to share seven of the lessons. So I'll be taking um, one lesson from each chapter. Seven lessons from chapter one to chapter seven. In the next video that I will do, I would cover chapter eight to chapter 14. Now follow me. The first thing I want to talk about is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of true knowledge is the foundation of true knowledge now what i understand by this is that when you have the fear of the lord when you fear the lord when you reverence the lord you would go for the purest of knowledge you will not go for false knowledge. You will not go for false doctrines. You will not uh, pick up things that are wrong and teach or live by. You would live by the true knowledge of God. Every knowledge that comes your way, whether it be spiritual or the necessary knowledge that you need in your day-to-day -day activity, the word of God becomes a standard for you to screen this knowledge that comes your way. Because you have the fear of the Lord in you, every knowledge that comes your way, every knowledge that you seek to acquire, you would check it by the standard of the word of God. You will check to know if it is consistent with the character and the person of God and the identity that you carry as a child of God. And if it is not, you know that it is not for you, right? So the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. When you have the fear of the Lord, it will help you to filter what kind of knowledge you go for, what kind of knowledge you pass across to other people, and what kind of knowledge that you need to throw away and you need to burn, right? So yes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of true knowledge for people who are having confusion in one aspect of life or the other when you have the fear of the lord in you the lord will help you clarify those areas where you have confusion and he will give he will show you the true knowledge he will show you what is correct he will show you what is right he will show you what is godly and is in accordance to his will 
The second thing I want to talk about is that I saw that there is a lot of emphasis on listening. Listen to your parents, listen to the Lord, listen to wisdom. That one caught me a lot. You know, the, the that passage where it says wisdom is calling and you should listen to wisdom. Now, what uh, does this mean? Uh, let me give an instance. So let's say you're scrolling through social media and you come across a video that is talking about things that are truth, things, things that are godly, things that are, you know, that are wise. But let's say because they don't really um, excite you, they don't really uh, gives you pleasure, give the flesh pleasure, you might tend to scroll away and go and look for entertainment to watch or to listen to. No, the Bible is telling us to listen to wisdom. Don't listen to vain talks. Don't listen to irrelevances that will not build your life. Listen to wisdom listen to wisdom you will hear where he says my son give attention to my words incline thy ears to my sayings right you pay attention listen to wisdom who you pay attention to what you pay attention to will determine what your manifestations will be if you are paying attention to wisdom words of wisdom you're paying attention to the word of the lord you're listening to wisdom of course you're going to be manifesting wisdom however if what you delight in what you pay, give your attentions to what you're listening to are things that are vain things that do not um, edify things that are just uh, that just gratify the flesh you can be rest assured that it will not help you manifest the wisdom of God. You will practically be showing off the folly of the world system. So listen to wisdom. Number three is another emphasis I noticed. There's an emphasis on treasuring wisdom, treasuring the word of God. God. And then the Bible All says that you should treasure wisdom like you would hidden treasures. You're not just to treasure it, but you are to seek for it wisdom is not actually negotiable here it's not something that you say eh, i don't want or eh, i want no every child of god ought to have wisdom ought to operate in the wisdom of god we all ought to seek wisdom like we would precious stones uh treasures we ought to seek wisdom like we would seek hidden treasures that is what the scripture is telling us in the book of proverbs Coming on in number four is that I have noticed that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding moves hand in hand. All through the book of Proverbs, the chapters that I have read, you keep seeing it. It talks about wisdom, it talks about knowledge, it talks about understanding. They move hand in hand. So you cannot be looking for wisdom and, uh, and um, not like knowledge. You cannot be seeking wisdom and hate knowledge and dislike understanding. No. If you must have wisdom, you must love knowledge. You must love understanding. A man of wisdom is a man of knowledge. A man of wisdom is a man of great understanding. So if you must be wise, just get ready. You must be knowledgeable and you must have understanding. Well, the good news is the Holy Spirit is there to help us. He's here to help us. Remember where we started from the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. Do you see it now? So if you want wisdom, you have to, uh, you have to also have knowledge. You also have to have understanding. Now, number five is that we need to keep the word of God in mind. Oh, when I saw that, it got to me. We need to keep the word of God in mind. I don't know the exact chapter, but somewhere again, it says that we should keep it in sight. So we have to keep it in our mind. We need to hide the word of God in our heart, like the book of Psalms says, right? So you need the word of God also in sight. You should see it. You should think it. Why? Because when you have the word of God in sight, when you keep the word of God in your heart, you will discover that decision making will no longer be 
a hustle or a hard thing for you. It will become easier. Why? Because the word of God will inform your choices. The word of God will inform the kind of decisions you will begin to make. And you will discover that what your decisions will become wise decisions. When we started in my last video, I told you one of the things that made me start to ask God for wisdom was because I began to think that my decision making was very poor. And as such, I began to say, Lord, give me wisdom. I'm not making very wise decisions and I don't like it. So now scripture has shown me God has shown me through scripture that if I keep the word of God in my heart and I keep the word of God in sight, what happens? It will help me navigate life effortlessly because with the word of God rich in me, the Holy Spirit reminds me and I'm able to make good decisions, wise decisions to the glory of God. Can you see that? The problem with which I came before God has been solved. Now, that was the enemy trying to make me uh, think that wisdom was far away from me. Meanwhile, wisdom was here all along. It was just me who was not recognizing wisdom, who was not listening to wisdom, right, properly. So now the Lord is showing me these things, and I am so glad, and I'm so excited. Number six is that <laughs> be open to correction be open to correction when you are corrected do not make excuses don't be quick to make excuses don't be quick to create defense wall of defense uh, for yourself be open-minded open-minded to corrections they are not usually sweet right but we have to learn it now this one hit right home because myself my husband used to tell me that i am not very open to correction even though i would like to argue that but he would always say that anytime i am corrected that my body language shows uh that like i'm angry or some of, of something of that nature right as when the scripture said this i pitched myself saying lizzie this is it this is what your husband has been complaining about right so you know sometimes you can be a little stubborn I'm a work in progress. The Holy Spirit is helping me. And this is him hammering it loud and clear. I need to be open to correction. Are you like me? When you're corrected, you don't like, you know, it doesn't like, especially when the correction does not come with, with words that are laced with grace and salt. You know, some corrections can come in such a blunt way. And instead of us to accept the correction, we tend to start finding fault. Um, why did you have to say it that way? You should have said it in a better way. You should have collect the correction first. Take the correction first. We will tackle how it was said later. But first of all, take the correction. Now, corrections are usually not very sweet. Now, in my case, my husband always say that when I am corrected, I used to look angry. Now, truth be told, sometimes I get angry, probably because of the way he said it, right? But the truth is, when I walk out, walk away and I'm alone, the Holy Spirit comes. You know what he's saying is true. So you better take the correction, right? Now, I will take the correction, but the thing is that I've already made a, a very terrible impression when I was corrected, okay? So let's all be open to correction especially when it is godly correction you're a child of god when what is not godly comes your way you would know all right that's why you have the holy spirit in you but when the right correction comes even the holy spirit will tell you that correction is correct please take it all right so let's be open to correction and let's quit giving excuses and trying to build um a wall of defense anytime we are being corrected Coming up at number seven, it's amazing that the word of God spoke strongly, strongly against immorality. I'm trying to be careful not to use the S word because I don't know if YouTube has issues with the S word. All right. So the word of God spoke strongly against it, spoke strongly against immorality for the married for the single, 
he spoke strongly against it that's what oh jesus you need to read it all the word of god is strongly against it the word of god gave uh, give wisdom on what to do to avoid uh falling into the trap of the harlot it is there in the book of proverbs let us read our bible oh. let us read our bible especially for those christians who defend infidelity in marriage who defend uh immorality for the singles and they call it whatever it is they call it the bible is against it god is against it i saw it and i was like okay okay now i knew that god was against it and i knew that scripture spoke against it but i never knew that there was a strong evidence against it in the book of proverbs i know about hebrews all right marriage is honorable honorable with bed on the file all right and a few other scriptures but I never knew about Proverbs. You need to read it. Go and read Proverbs. Go and read Proverbs. I think it is in chapter 7, chapter 6 and 7. I think it even uh, encroached into chapter 8. The Bible is strongly against it. Keep yourself holy. Keep yourself for the Lord. Honor God with your body. Honor God with your body. Not just with your lips with every fiber of your being honor god and you will be glad you did so these are the seven lessons that i have chosen to share with you today i'll see you again in my next video on wisdom nuggets lessons from the book of proverbs when i'll be sharing with you lessons seven lessons again or more uh from Proverbs chapter 8 to 14. You don't want to miss it. I promise you it is loaded. You don't want to miss it. Now, let me know in the comment section what, which of these lessons resonate with you. Which of them spoke to you? Which of them are you going to take and implement? If it is all, let me know it is all. All right. Now, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. Share with your friends so they can follow me as well on this journey as we learn together from the book of Proverbs. Again, you can take up this challenge and also start your own journey to studying the book of Proverbs and gaining the wisdom that God has for you in this book. Do it. You will love it. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, stay original and be authentic about it. God bless you.